What's up guys, I'm Derek Craig here at Merida College's Oil and Gas Technical Exhibition here with Oilfield Basics and today we're going to get a quick look at a Halliburton data van. So this is a van that's literally parked on a frack site, whether it's Halliburton, whoever, there's always going to be a data van on any active frack site. So Halliburton in this case is going to give us a quick in-depth view of what happens inside and what they're monitoring, what they're looking for, and who's in there. So let's check it out. All right, so now we're inside of Halliburton's data van here on site, and I've got Marlon McCoy with Halliburton to walk us through what all is inside and what the different functions of each screen and, and what it's all showing and, and how everything is controlled and operated here on site. Okay. So, as Derek said, this is our TCC, our Technical Command Center, and what usually takes place in here from day to day is we have three major components or three major factors on site calling the job. In this area, we have our treaters or our service supervisors. In the middle, we normally have our customer, and to the far left, we have our engineer who's controlling and assisting the supervisors as well as the customer with putting away the job successfully. Now on our service supervisor side, what they're visually looking at and monitoring throughout the job would be each piece of equipment that is on location. So here with our ACE-1 unit, we have our supervisors that will take a look at each of the pumps as well as our blenders and our express sand system on location. What they do there is monitor everything from pump rates to pump temperature, as well as the speed of our sand screws, our chemical additives, and take into account where we actually are in placement or treatment of the specific job. As we move over to the left, we'll have either a second supervisor sitting in this seat or sometimes we have one person sitting here controlling both sides but in our ACE2 section of the TCC we'll have another supervisor or, or treater as I said looking at our insight for stimulation software which is something that our or one of the software projects that our engineer is taking control of on the further end of the data van and what the individual in this section is doing is working double duties they're taking a look at the engineering side as well as the supervisor, service leader, or treater side on this portion. In this middle section here, our company man usually sits in between our treater, service supervisor, and our engineer. And during that time, they're filling out the specifics for the ENP company that they are requesting on location. Most of those data points, they can pull off of the charts and graphs that they're observing, whether it be pressure data points, fluid volume data points within a specific stage, or certain specifications where fluid is actually being monitored going down the wellbore and the correlating stage propping or volume of fluid pump up to that point in the job. The main purpose of the consultant or the OSR, which is the operator service representative, is to make sure that what we know from the operator is actually being followed on location. So when we get to location, there's a specific blender schedule, as we call it, that tells us rate, sand concentrations, chemical concentrations that we actually need to pump to complete the job from beginning to end. It's his job in conjunction with our supervisors and engineer to make sure that that actually happens on location. From the viewpoint of the company man on location, the representative that is working directly for the operator, here we're looking at our chemical chart. The basics that you will find in any job in the Northeast, whether Marcellus or Utica, will be that of a friction reducer, a skill inhibitor, as well as a bactericide. Now, most of the times, we'll always have a net pressure plot, which gives us the ability to actually monitor the trends as we go throughout the job. There are specific modes on the net pressure plot that we pay attention to and we want to avoid. The main one that we're looking to avoid is looking at this net calculated bottom hole pressure we want to make sure that we avoid a sharp 
upward slope in that pressure trend because what that tells us is we're heading towards that unfortunate event of screening out and ending the job prematurely. Now, besides that, we're looking at some of our logical numbers just to see the different treating pressures on a multi-well pad. So what we pay attention to, as you see here, is the surface casing pressure and the backside pressure as we stimulate the current well. We want to make sure that we don't see any sort of communication from wells close by that we may be overextending or communicating from the current well to wells nearby. Along those lines, we also have other logicals that we pay attention to. Some may differ depending on who the representative is sitting in this area. Some pay more attention to the job profit that's being pumped. Some pay attention to just the clean stage size. Each stage has a specific sand concentration that we're looking for. Starting off here, we started off with a half pound hundred mesh. We're going up to a 2.25 pound per gallon hundred mesh. We have one more stage within this system before we move into flush, which is the final stage of the wellbore, of the wellbore stimulation. So the customer representative sitting in the middle is making sure that all three phases within this TCC are operating on the same system, making sure that the fluid volumes match, sand concentrations, and we're on step throughout the entire treatment where we need to be. This fluid tracking graph, this wellbore fluid tracking graph, just pretty much shows that where we are on our pumping schedule lines up with the specific depth correlation on surface from surface to bottom hole what you're looking at here is approximately 7, 17,000 feet of measured depth in the wellbore so as we start a new stage you'll see a fluid change from stage 10 to stage 11 will be indicated by a different fluid color and it progresses throughout the wellbore as we continuously pump until it reaches the perforations and that will remain constant until we change and go into another stage which will be indicated by a color change. More importantly, one of the main graphs that we look at is our treatment chart. So we're looking at our calculated bottom hole pressure, our surface treating pressure, our surface rate, as well as our propping concentrations on surface and bottom hole. This is one of the things that every single person in this van is paying attention to mainly because we want to make sure as I mentioned pressure stays below that maximum pressure that we're allowed to work on that well bore because everything is given a maximum treatment pressure based off of the internal yield strength of the casing down hole. We don't want to exceed that because at that point we can uh, go into failure of the casing potentially parting casing. So for this job, for example, we're currently pumping at 10,700 pounds. Max pressure that we're allowed to pump on this job, let's say it's 11,300 pounds. It's our job to make sure that we do not exceed nor get into a danger zone. There are certain fail safes on location to make sure that that doesn't happen. Currently, of course, we aren't able to see that. But on location, we're capable of using what we would call pop-offs to relieve some of the pressure if we approached that max pressure. From there, that's pretty much what the customer is looking at from this perspective and what they're monitoring in the TCC. Now, as we slide further down to the left, what we have is our actual engineering station on location. Our engineers sit here and for the most part they're acting as the service supervisor slash treater, the company representative, as well as the Halliburton Energy Services engineer. Now the reason that our engineers wear so many hats is because they have to understand and be able to communicate with our service supervisors 
on every piece of equipment that is actually on location. Beyond that, they have to understand the needs of our customers and the best way for them to be met while sitting in this chair calling the job. And on top of that, they also have to pay attention to specific pressure trends, specific concentrations of the chemicals, as well as concentrations of the sand in order to make sure we avoid unfortunate events such as premature screen outs, which will cause us to end a job early. Now, with all of that, the majority of everything that takes place within this data van is to make sure whoever has requested Halliburton's service on the stimulation side as a unit between the engineer, our company representative, as well as our service supervisor or treater to the far right, that we can work as one, stay on the same page, and are in lockstep to provide the best service for the operator that has hired us. All right, so thanks again for taking the time to show us through the Halberton data van here. And no quick question too, before we conclude, when we first started this video, we were outside, and we saw the lights on top, we had blue lights and, and red lights flashing. Can you just explain what that means? All right, so over the years in the industry, one of the main things that we focus on is safety. So it's important for us to not only protect the Halliburton employees, but the employees that work side by side with us day in and day out. There are certain situations on location where noise is definitely a limiting factor on safety, as well as visibility and just the moving parts because as an industry whole, we just do not rest. So the lights provide the indicators to everyone around. Red lights means it's a high pressure zone or we are currently pumping. So we prefer for everyone to stay out of the red zone. It gives them that visible uh, indicator. The blue lights pertain to wireline where guns may be armed or in the air where they're getting ready to go down hole where that gives everyone the understanding that we should be in radio silence in order to in order to negate the possibility of potentially firing guns on surface by accident. So those are the purposes for the lights on the TCC. Right. Thanks again for walking us through the trailer. No Appreciate it.